right. As usual, while people file in, uh, crazy question of the day. It's <laughs> summer. It's back to school. Are you guys back to school yet? Not not yet. A couple more weeks. Okay. All right. A couple more weeks. Wow. Um, yeah, we're actually taking our youngest to college today. So uh, tomorrow is going to be quite the tearful, tearful Aww. day. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a long ride home. So, um, all right. So with that, how do you recommend that we celebrate taking our youngest son to uh, oh. <laughs> after we come home? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, what's something that you've always wanted? My Okay, so my parents threatened after my brother finally moved out, he's the youngest, that they were going to turn his bedroom into like a hot tub room. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe just get a quote for a hot tub room to be installed or something of that nature. <laughs> He's on the second floor. That would not be a good idea. <laughs> uh, all right. But we'll take it under advisement. Yeah, we can dream. We can dream. All right. Hot tub room on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So, all right. Well, hello and welcome to uh, to another episode of TPN Tax Talks. Today, we are talking about how to get the most out of recruiting. Our speaker is Christine Gervais, who actually is hiring now. So, uh, <laughs> yes. so yeah. So if you're looking for a job, reach out to her. She'll give her contact info later. Uh, I'm Gary Dehart, publisher of Insightful Accountant and Tax Practice News and the host of the Accounting Insiders podcast. Christine, I'll let her uh, introduce herself. My two little uh, housekeeping items are no CPE. It's only about 30 minute webinar. So uh, we don't get you to the CPE number. And then uh, if you have any questions, be real specific in your questions and just put them down in the Q&A panel. And Christine will try to get to them um, before she closes if she can't get to them as she's going through the presentation. Uh, with that said, I really think that's all I have. It's all, my work is done here. Awesome. Well, you already did. We already did get one question asking if you would be sending out a copy of the slide deck. So I answered that and said yes, that you would be uh, popping that in the chat and sending it out afterwards as well. All right. There we go. Done. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Okay, now the hardest part of all of these sessions is always getting our technology up here and running and going for everybody. So let's just. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you as always for being here. Um, as Gary mentioned, I will keep the chat and the Q&A box open uh, in this window over here. So if you have any questions, please at any point in time, feel free to pop those into the Q&A box or to the chat. Gary did just add a copy, a PDF copy of the slide deck to the chat. So if you wanna go ahead and grab that, you can. We'll also send that out after the session as well. Um, and as always, I include my contact information at the end. So if you need to reach out to me for anything, feel free. Before we get going, just a couple of other events I wanna mention to all of you, especially if you're loving these tax talks, uh, please mark your calendars and save the date for our next future forward event, which is going to be September 26th and 27th. I will be doing a session on uh, artificial intelligence and how to actually use AI tools in your practice. And Gary did just post the future forward registration link in the chat as well. So if you want to go ahead and grab that link and make sure you're registered for that event, tons of CPE available for you and some really great speakers. And as well, you can mark your calendar. This one is a little bit closer coming up in just a few weeks on September 6th. Uh, this Safeguards Rule Compliance webinar with Steve Perkins and Andrew. I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce that last name, Les Seif, um, and Allison from Lysio. So if this is something that you're interested in, uh, mark your calendars for this one as well. And that registration link is also posted in the chat. So go ahead and grab either one of those and make sure that you mark your calendars. And then as always, if you're enjoying the tax talks or any of the content from Tax Practice News, there's written articles that we produce every single week that might be pertinent to you in running your tax practice. You can scan that QR code and that will take you right to the subscribe page. So then you know about all of our future events and you're getting our weekly newsletter. So if you haven't attended a tax talk in the past or we haven't met, my name is Christine Gervais. I've been a licensed CPA for going on almost 15 years now. Um, I have run my own practice since 2016. So recruiting is something that I am intimately familiar with. I've had to hire, fire, manage, recruit, and do all of those things. Uh, and it's an area that's a little bit challenging for a lot of us right now. 
And as Gary mentioned, um, we are in back to school phase. Um, so why are we talking about this right now? We are talking about this because a lot of the colleges are going back to school at this current juncture in time. And of course, we're going to be looking to get onto those campuses and do some recruiting for potential new positions, internships, especially internships that we might want to be filling during tax season. Uh, so we're going to be going into our busy, busy season after the turn of the year. But now is the time that you need to be solidifying these relationships if you're planning on doing some recruiting on some college campuses. So students who are going back to school, there's going to start to be live hiring events at a lot of these schools especially for the juniors and the seniors looking to secure those post-graduation uh, job offers or to secure those internships between their juniors and senior years. So those are all things that are going to be happening in the very near future. And we wanna make sure that you're prepared to be able to participate in those. So we're gonna talk today about how to get the best out of those recruiting experiences and make sure that your firm is set up for success in terms of filling the roles that you might need to be filled. Cynthia, I do see your question. Um, the tax planning session for the, ta the tax talks was last month, actually. So if you want to pop over to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to watch last month's topic on tax planning right on the YouTube channel. So hopefully that helps and you can still stay for some recruiting knowledge today. So before we dive into you know, recruiting in general, we want to make sure that you're developing some type of strategy around recruiting. and walking through these steps is really pertinent to help make sure that you're successful, you know, not just in terms of finding the right person, but in overall, making sure that you're fitting the needs of your organization. So first and foremost, we need to look at what are the company goals. So what are you hiring for? Is it a specific role? Are you not quite sure? Do you just feel obligated to be involved in the recruiting process because your competition is? We really need to look at you know, what is it that we're hoping to get out of this recruiting process? Are you really only looking for a part-time intern to come in during tax season and fill a seasonal role type of need? Are you looking for a full-time permanent position to have a specific skill set? So we want to be able to answer those questions first because that's going to help point you in the right direction in terms of finding the right person um, and also getting what you actually need out of this process. So there's a huge difference, obviously, between recruiting on a college campus and knowing that you need to fill a role for a full-time experienced person. So being able to answer that question for your organization first is super important. And we'll talk about money as well, but establishing a budget critical, critical second step. So now you know who it is that you're looking for after we've looked at what are the goals of your organization in terms of your hiring, and then you have to establish a budget. And this area is really important for a couple of different reasons, obviously, because from a yearly budget standpoint, you need to know how much it's going to cost you to add this position. But in the particular market that we're in, I see Every single day, there is way, way, way more work at accounting firms than there is people to do it. So that means, unfortunately, for those of us who are in the hiring position, you're paying inflated salaries. Great news for the people that we're hiring. Um, but unfortunately, the supply is significantly less than the demand right now. So when you're looking at your budget, you need to be prepared to offer uh, what I would refer to as competitive um, salaries and benefits as well, which we'll talk about, you know, some things that you can think about in terms of benefits and setting your firm apart. But you need to be prepared to offer reasonable salaries. If you're trying to go in and you think that you're going to get a really high quality person for the lower end of the market, that's just not the case of what's happening right now. So you want to make sure that you're prepared financially from that perspective. And then creating a repeatable hiring process. So we'll kind of talk about this a little bit more too and some of the things that you can do. But what I mean by that is that you don't want every interview to be this completely standard cookie cutter process, but you do want to have some idea of what's going to happen in interviews because you need to have some sort of level playing field that you're using to compare and contrast candidates. So if every candidate needs to submit a resume and a cover letter and they're all asked at least, you know, kind of the same five to 10 baseline interview questions and they're all 
reviewed and compared and contrasted on a certain set of metrics, that's what I would consider to be a repeatable hiring process, meaning the system is in place that you can do the same thing every single time, regardless of the candidates changing, even regardless of the position that you're hiring for changing, you have that same repeatable hiring process. So being able to make that more consistent is a couple of things for you. One is it just makes everything easier from an internal perspective, and you can have people within the hiring process kind of be interchangeable. In other words, if you need to have um, more than one person be interviewing candidates, or if you can't be there as the manager or the owner and you need to have someone else interview or do a second interview, you already have a system in place to make sure that what you're receiving out of that process is consistent every single time and with every single candidate. Soliciting feedback from your team, I think, is super critical um, because we'll also talk about one of the things that candidates is looking for is developing that healthy working environment or being in a healthy working environment. And so you're really looking for someone who's going to be a good fit for your organization from that team perspective as well. So it's more than just checking off the boxes of who has the skill set that you're looking for. It's also, you know, who's going to be a good fit with the rest of your organization, what are the gaps that your team is seeing? So if you're not sure like exactly what your company hiring goals should be right now, talk to your team members about where they're feeling the most stress or pressure, or the most um, squeezed for time. And those might be areas that you can look at in terms of can we develop a role that's going to potentially fit this need. And then, you, of course, you want to create a positive candidate experience. And we'll dive into this a little bit more as well, but not creating a really positive experience for the candidates that you're talking to is something that is going to be detrimental to your firm's really your reputation later on. So you want to treat your candidates um, and create that experience the same way that you would with any new prospective client. You want to come across as professional, organized, clear on what it is that you're looking for. That's going to help you form the foundation of the best relationships. So again, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more as well. And then building a target pipeline, that means building up a database of potential uh, individuals that would be a good fit for what it is that you are actually looking for. So what are candidates looking for? So this is a, a really important part of the process that we need to be prepared for is understanding when we're talking to potential recruits. Again, you know, this doesn't matter if it's the college student or if it's the experienced person coming into a full-time role. This in general is what your candidates are looking for. And you need to understand this perspective because you need to be ready to offer this to them if you really wanna be competitive in this market. So the number one thing that all the candidates are looking for is more money. Uh, so that is going to be a deciding factor between you and your competition when you're going after the same individual. Remote work options. This, of course, can be super challenging if you're hiring someone who has little to no experience like that college recruit. A lot of times they need to have that hands-on learning experience. So if you are working in a remote environment, which a lot of us are now, you just need to keep that in mind that you need to have some type of a system in place to make sure that your less experienced candidates that are coming on board still have the same type of training opportunities and training and development culture available to them. So however, you're going to build that into your remote work environment. But experienced individuals are definitely looking to see a remote work option. Um, they're leaving their jobs that do not offer that in exchange for jobs that do. Promotion options. And so that just means that uh, you could potentially have an experienced candidate willing to leave their current job in exchange for getting a promotion somewhere else. But candidates also want to be able to see that level of progression available to them. So if it's somebody brand new coming in, obviously, they're not getting a promotion on day one, but they need to be able to see what the future is going to look like in terms of potential promotion opportunities. Candidates are looking for challenging and meaningful work, and they're also looking for that healthy workplace culture. So that's beyond just the work-life balance. They actually want to enjoy working with their coworkers. And so that's one of the reasons why I mentioned it really helps for you to get some feedback from your existing team especially if your existing team is hopefully um, individuals that you love and enjoy working with, because that cultural and social fit is going to be really important. Uh, and you don't want somebody coming in um, who isn't going to be a good fit, not just because that's not a great uh, 
place for your team to be, but it's also not a great place for them to be. If you bring someone in who isn't going to be a great fit for the environment, they're not going to be happy. And we don't want to waste our time hiring someone that we don't think is going to stay. So then talking a little bit more about creating that hiring process. And again, we want to make sure that this is consistent um, to create that experience for the candidates, but also helps you to really make sure that the information that you're getting throughout this hiring process affords you the opportunity to consistently uh, review everyone from that sort of same level playing field. So you definitely want to be creating job descriptions and reviewing applications um, how you're going to do that. It can be extremely time consuming. You wanna have a process for how you're gonna screen candidates, what's gonna be talked about in the interviews, who's gonna negotiate the hiring, and then how do you onboard a candidate? So just talking about creating job descriptions for a second, um, there's a ton of tools out there. There's a ton of different uh, like recruiting softwares and different platforms that you can use to help you with this. Personally, I feel like creating the job description is just not something that is my strong suit. I always feel like I get writer's block when I'm all of a sudden asked to create a formal job description. It's like, I know the things that I don't have time to do during the day, and that's what I need to hire for. But putting it into this formal job description just sometimes seems hard for me. So one of the things that I think is a great tool that you can use, and again, we'll talk about this in my AI session next month during Future Forward, but use some of the AI tools, you know, so you can go out to chat GPT and you can just type in, um, create a job description for a part-time tax preparer who needs to have at least three years worth of experience and will be filing mostly individual income tax returns. And you can see what it will spit out for you. And it will spit out not only a job description, but it'll typically spit out um, like actual response, like a responsibility section for you. So that's a free tool that you can use to help build some job descriptions for you or do some of that writing piece that might otherwise be super time consuming. And now you have a really nice base that you didn't have to spend the time typing out and you can just customize that a little bit to be specific to your organization. So that's a great tool that you can use to try and help uh, save a little bit of time there and create some job descriptions for some of the positions that you're potentially looking to fill. In terms of using applications to, or using software, I guess, to review applications, I think that how you choose to collect applications is going to play a really big role in this. And we'll also talk about like where to share that you're hiring to get the most attention. So places like LinkedIn, Indeed, social media are all places that you could uh, post that you're hiring, but you really want to be looking for something that's going to give you a way to manage and process those applications. So I'll just use LinkedIn as the example. I happen to really like it. Uh, there's other softwares that do this. Indeed does as well. I believe ZipRecruiter does as well, but it allows you to put into the onset of that some questions or minimum requirements. So for example, if you want your candidate to absolutely non-negotiable have um, at least a year of experience, or if you want your candidate to absolutely non-negotiable have spent at least three years preparing tax returns, you can put those things in as yes, no questions for the candidates that they're required to answer. And a lot of these software applications will actually filter out the candidates that don't meet those qualifications for you. So then you can, if that's, those are your absolute non-negotiables, highly recommend using something like I said, like LinkedIn or Indeed or ZipRecruiter that allows you to have those questions at the onset of the process because you'll get a million applications and it becomes this incredibly time-consuming process to go through and weed out what's not a good fit. And you'll find, unfortunately, that probably a lot of the applications that you get in online softwares like this are, in fact, not a good fit. And you don't want to have to spend the time sorting through those if there is an opportunity to allow the software to immediately sort through based off of your non-negotiables. So that's something that I highly recommend looking into and choosing one of those to make sure that you're helping yourself in terms of efficiency with just sorting through those applications a little bit faster. That way you're only looking at the candidates who are actually meeting those minimum requirements for you. 
And I mentioned this before, this could be another place. I haven't played around with it personally, but I bet you that if you typed into chat GPT, you know, create a list of interview questions that I should ask for this position, it would come up with some baseline questions for you that you could then sort of customize to your firm. But I highly recommend coming up with at least five to 10 uh, interview questions that everybody is going to ask in all the interviews, no matter what. So in other words, if you're doing second and third interviews, if you're having a hiring manager interview for you, that regardless of who the candidate talks to, they're going to be asked these baseline questions. That will give you an idea if you're getting consistent answers, if they're telling different people different things, if you're trying to compare and contrast two candidates that have the same type of experience but might be interviewed by two different people, um, you know that you're going to have had those interviewers ask your candidates the same questions. And so now you have a solid baseline to kind of go off of. It doesn't mean that you can't ask additional questions or that conversation won't just flow at an interview and other things may come up, but having at least that sort of like five foundational questions that every candidate is going to get asked is going to provide you something to give you a little bit better of a compare and contrast scenario, like I said, uh, that's gonna help you actually decide between candidates at the end of the day. And then who's going to be responsible for negotiating the hire? You want this to be a really streamlined, very professional looking organized process. So I can tell you from firsthand experience that you can lose a really great candidate at the end of this process by really just not having the negotiations be well organized or professional. If you're coming across as if you don't have the authority to hire this individual or you're not sure if you want to or you're not sure if you can accept their salary requirements, those are all going to be turnoffs from the candidate's perspective and you could potentially lose them to a competitor. So you want to make sure that you already have that negotiation process nailed down. Who's going to make the offer? What's the offer letter going to look like? What are we going to offer that candidate? You want the details of all of that hammered out before you go back to a candidate and actually present them with an offer. And then lastly, you want to make sure that your onboarding process for a brand new hire is going to also be professional and organized. So again, if you're not using a specific process, I highly recommend that you look at this ahead of time. So for example, um, Gusto, if you're familiar with Gusto, they're a payroll processor, but they also offer online hiring, uh, like onboarding tools in terms of collecting W-4s, collecting employee information, allowing them to set up their own profile, allowing them to connect their own direct deposit. That can all be time consuming stuff that can accidentally, you know, have one of those forms get forgotten about if you don't have a process in place. So again, this is the part of the relationship where you're wanting to put your best foot forward with your candidates. You want them to be confident in the fact that they're coming into an organization that is excited and ready to have them. So you want to make sure that onboarding process of how you're going to get all of their forms, you know, who are they going to report to on the first day? When are they showing up? Do they have a computer ready to go? What software are they going to use? You want all of those things decided ahead of time. Highly recommend creating a checklist to make sure that when you're ready to go, um, and they're ready to go that all of those things are just going to happen seamlessly for you. They're very easy to forget in the excitement and stress of hiring a new candidate. So we talked about most of these um, just tech tools to help make that whole process more efficient for you, allowing AI to write job descriptions or social media posts for you to let people know that you're hiring. Look at using hiring tools that it's going to sort through some of those resumes for you or some of those applications for you. And then look at your human resources process to make sure that you are offering a good candidate experience when someone does get hired. And I will tell you that your best resource for that is your current employees. So if you wanna go get some very serious feedback from them about what their candidate onboarding process was like, what they liked and what they didn't like or what might've been intimidating to them, that's a really great resource to go back to if you want to improve your onboarding process and your overall candidate experience. And then leverage social media. So uh, use these platforms to help notify that you are hiring, 
there's so many places that you can do paid advertising. LinkedIn will let you, you know, boost a job post for X number of dollars per day. My personal opinion is that you really don't need to do this. Um, you can leverage social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of these places to just share the links to your job posting. I think it's more important that you're posting your job in a spot that's going to allow you to, like I said, pre-sort some of those resumes, ask some of those minimum requirement questions, and then you can just share the link from that site into some of these other places to leverage social media. Uh, and that's a great way to keep your budget for the hiring process lower. So I will just take a breath for a second and just see if there's any questions so far on anything that we have talked about. I don't see anything in the Q&A box, but I'll give you a second to just type into that box if you have any questions about any part of this process. And then of course, like I said, I always offer my contact information. So if you wanna grab my contact information because you do have a specific question that you didn't wanna ask during the session, feel free to grab that. And I'm happy to answer those at any point in time. So I've been on both sides of the recruiting process uh, many times from both the hiring and the being hired uh, position and it can be a very stressful time consuming process. So as I mentioned, really taking the time to make sure that you know what you're hiring for, why you're hiring for that position, and then streamlining it from front to back. It's going to make it a much easier and less stressful process, not only for you in terms of finding the right candidate, but also for your candidate as well. At the end of the day, we all want really great people working for us, and we all want really great people working for us for a long time. Having to replace people and having a constant attrition of staff can become extremely expensive for a firm. You're spending more money on recruiting and training at that point than you're actually getting out in terms of work product from your candidates. So that's not a position that you want to be in having constant turnover. It's also not a good feeling for your clients. It really can do a lot of damage to a firm's reputation to have that constant turnover. So really laying the, the groundwork to have a solid hiring process in place at the onset of this, know what you're looking for, know how you're going to bring them on board, know exactly what they're going to do on their first day. That's going to create a more positive experience for everybody involved, and you're going to be much more likely to keep those candidates for a longer period of time. So no questions in the Q&A box. I'll leave it open for just one more minute. And again, if you did not already, the slide deck is available in the chat. You can grab that PDF as well as the registration link for Future Forward for the Safeguards event. And thank you, Gary, also posted the link to the YouTube channel. So if you were looking for uh, a recording of a previous session, it will be out on YouTube. This one should be up in a few weeks as well. All right, well, thanks, Christine. And I'm actually throwing another link into the chat and uh, this is going to tie in with my question for you. So do you have any experience with outsourcing um, either to another firm or overseas? Yeah, both actually. And that's a really great question. We didn't necessarily talk a lot about outsourcing today, um, but both. And so they both have their pros and cons. Outsourcing, I've talked a lot about in some of our other sessions. I am a huge proponent of outsourcing because I think that that gives especially smaller firms a lot of flexibility in terms of getting some help in the very specific areas that you need without necessarily taking on the financial and the time can burden of hiring a full-time employee, but you have to know specifically what you're looking for. And you also have to understand that if you're outsourcing to a contractor, they don't work just for you. You know, so that's not someone who's going to give you your full-time attention. They most likely have other clients and that might be the right fit, but you have to decide that at the onset. And then of course, when you're looking at outsourcing to an overseas scenario, you have to be careful with tax preparation. So there are very specific federal laws around sending uh, tax preparation information outside of the United States, even if it's an outsourcing firm that you're contracting with, you need to have your clients express written permission to do that. So it's just... It, 
it's certainly a great opportunity. I've worked with some really incredible people overseas. Uh, one of the nice things about it is that they're working while we're sleeping. And so there's something to be said for that. But again, I think you really just have to assess if that's the right fit for your firm. I do have a quick question. Um, where do you get good per diem people for tax season? That's a really great question um, and really difficult to answer. It depends really what you're looking for in terms of experience. If you just want somebody who's going to be a part-time contractor during tax season, that's where I think outsourcing is a great fit, is per potentially finding another firm or another professional that has capacity to just kind of help you with some of your overflow. Um, but it's not as easy as it used to be to find like actual part-time employees that are fine with just being hired for the season. Most people are, are looking for something a little bit more solid than that. All right. And with that, so that last link that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I put in the chat, we actually have a webinar at two o'clock that Liz uh, Scott is hosting that's on outsourcing, excuse me, sorry. Um, it's titled Accounting Outsourcing Panel Discussion, Boosting Productivity, Reducing Burnout and Taking Action. Um, that's at two o'clock, that's on that link. So um, again, Christine, thank you. It was funny, before we started, we were talking about uh, hiring and just the process and, and dealing with people. Uh, clearly, you've researched that because <laughs> you're out there. Good stuff. And and again, she is hiring. So send her your resume if, uh, if you're looking for a job. So, thanks a lot. And again, uh, everybody, have my have my wife, me and my wife, and your thoughts and prayers. We're dropping <laughs> a son at college, uh, taking him today, leaving him there tomorrow. So it's going to be a long ride home for my wife, which will make it a very long ride home for yours truly. So um, we certainly appreciate you being here for about 30 minutes. Christine, thank you so much for your hard work and for the great information you always share. Thanks a lot. Have a great Bye. weekend.